okay don't don't, don't worry I, i will i will uh, do it so what will happen is as of now it is 2 1 so we'll say it will be c2 this into so it will be c2 i will be taking right and this is now d3 so this into d3 i will take and this into e2 i will take so this into e2 so just like some values will so what will happen is this will help you in estimating what is your portfolio value okay on t plus 1th day so you have done once okay similarly you will do once more okay based on some simulation data so you will do multiple times what will happen is each time you will have different different value of the portfolio let's say this is a weighted value let's say you have this and investment was the same in the start okay so you have got some value similarly you will got, get some value over here okay so you will get some value over here so like that way you will be able to compute okay some portfolio return okay and you will be able to find out the bottom values and you will say that that is your value at risk okay so the process is same see what you are saying is how much is the return generated historically you can take 100 day data 200 500 day data okay see okay so the, you will say okay there are 1000 returns now out of this 1000 returns i need to know so let's say these are the various returns are there i need to know which is the return suitable sometimes this return will be suitable sometimes this return will be suitable i will apply and i will get the portfolio values for the different different and i will get the portfolio value i will do it once twice many times i will get this value different different values okay i will be able to sort these values from lowest to highest and i will be able to let's say if i am interested in 5 percent where i get 100 values i will be seeing that okay five values and the sixth one that will be the where okay is this process clear does it make sense okay this gives you much better value okay then only the raw data because you are doing some simulation you are not saying okay this is exactly i am getting not putting like okay weightage if, if all the values you are taking over there randomly you are selecting some of the values in reality yes you may get some values randomly okay, okay. now what we have is another method okay historical simulation we have seen but this is a historical simulation using the non parametric density estimation okay so what we have is earlier the problem with historical simulation which we discussed that is it was a discreteness right so it did not allow you to compute where between any data points we saw the example that you got 5 if you have 100 data you can get 5% where but you cannot get 5.1% where because of the discreteness of this data however in case of non parametric estimation we don't have this restriction we cannot say okay we are restricted by this discrete okay so what we do is we whatever the existing data points are there which is actually a histogram so i i have the diagram in the next page okay the existing data points what we can do is we can smoothen them okay so we can smooth them okay so the smoothing can be linear okay just adding the midpoints of the historical or it can be gra uh, curve also to we will smooth to get the where at all confidence level okay a simple way is to connect the midpoint of the histogram okay so or a linear adjustment okay another more complex approach is to join this by taking some curve okay so you will see it from this diagram see what happens is this is your original histogram okay what we are doing is we are trying to select these midpoints okay and we are joining these midpoints so please note that there is a loss of probability here okay because this is not taken but this is included so some loss is here some gain is over here overall the probability is still maintained as 1 okay so this is the original histogram what we do is we take this midpoint so previous one will take this midpoint like that so what will happen is you will be able to create a histogram like this so you will say that okay this is joining midpoint then joining midpoint 
Okay, joining midpoint. So you will say over here that okay, this black one. Then you will say black black. You will say take all of this as a function. So your new probability distribution or probability density function will not be this square square type. It will be starting here this this like that. So this is one approach which is like just joining the midpoint. Okay. However, you can have more complex approach wherein depending on the frequency you may employ some curve let's say you will say okay here i will go i will try to go this way and then i will try to capture more over here whatever the methods you are estimating that can be done so this is called as surrogate density function because this is not the actual density function right we do not have to again do this Okay, because as the aim statement says that you have to describe the approach. Okay, so what is the approach that we have is approach is what we will take the normal histogram, we will smoothen it. Okay, once you have smoothened, you will have a new curve. Okay, and that you can use to estimate where at more precise values rather than getting some discrete values. The next historical simulation method which you have seen in your level 1 also, okay, it is known as age weighted historical simulation. It is age weighted historical simulation. It was used in your level 1 and was mentioned as a hybrid method. Okay. So age weighted historical simulation method what it does is okay, it gives more weightage to the recent hist observation. More weightage is given to the recent observation and less weightage is given to the further observation okay so how that is done that is being done by assuming that we have a lambda we have like okay the rate the values other are the weightage are actually reducing by some value lambda okay so think about it if i take w1 okay so w1 will be equal to lambda 1 minus 1 into 1 minus lambda divided by 1 minus lambda to the power n. Now what is this n? n is the sample size or the past data that you are taking. So this is your w1. So this is lambda to the power 0 which is 1. If you take w2, it will be lambda 2 minus 1 which is 1 and this will remain same. 1 minus lambda to the power n right so if you divide w2 by w1 what you are getting is lambda and this lambda is taking a value which is between 0 and 1 okay so what we are saying is i will apply okay if we are trying to measure the var on this day so the past day okay I will apply this much weight. One more day before this, I will apply this. Okay. So what happens is this weight okay, will be more than this because you have W2 is equal to lambda into W1. Okay. And your lambda since it is less than 1, so it will this is actually lambda times the W1. So this is actually going exponentially. So you have W1. This is lambda times W1. This is lambda square times W1. Like that you will go back till n data. Right. So n you will have lambda to the power n minus 1, 1 minus lambda like that. Right. So that you will get this weighting. Okay. Now what is the difference that this age weighted brings? Age weighted it helps you in giving more weight to this recent phenomena and less weightage to this phenomena, the past one. Okay. Again, if you see in case of history and the weightage it is kind of exponentially reducing. Okay. In case of historical, normal historical, you had all of these returns given the same weightage. Okay. Now think about if this is your n data, okay. you give all of this same weightage this n minus 1th data which is over here what is the weightage that is given to you to n minus 1th data it is 0 so suddenly what is happening is ok 
okay i think it is better to draw here okay so what you are doing is you are providing this as 1 minus n 1 minus n 1 minus n 1 minus n suppose you have four five days data you have so this is the day we want to measure we have five day data so you will assign 1 by 5 1 by 5 weight to all of this okay what is the weight that is assigned to this data so this is 5 okay the weight that you assign to 0 is 0 because you are only concerned about this as the sample size okay so as abruptly what is happening is from 0.2 weight it is going to 0 weight okay so there is an abrupt change so if you see this is an abrupt change so all of this till n minus 1 we are getting 0 weight and suddenly what happens is in case of sorry in case of n you are getting a jump in the weight 0.2 all of these are getting 0.2 weight okay so this is a sudden jump that you see from here to here in exponential what happens is okay this is given a weight of w1 lambda w1 if you go over here the last one is given lambda n minus 1 w one weight right so this is very very small and the next one will be zero so what happens is the weighting function is uh, exponentially okay so it is exponentially decreasing okay so here we are more recent higher weightage less recent lower weightage lower weightage and ultimately it starts falling to zero so there is not a sudden jump that is seen here okay so as a result what we say is this is a much better approach than what we have a historical simulation approach okay so what we have to do is please note that this is the approach but many approaches they vary so the approach varies because you have to take this n what is the sample size you have to take and you also have to take this lambda so these are the choices the two choices you as a modeler have to take so what they are saying is if you are able to take this lambda suitable choice of lambda it can make the 